Hi, I'm Natalie, a nine-time super host on Airbnb. The feedback my guests constantly give me is that they love the local tips and travel itineraries that I supply. On this channel, I share some of these tips and reveal the hidden Auckland that regular tourists never discover. I'm doing this because I want to help you get the most out of your stay. If this is your first time on my channel, thanks for stopping by. Hi, I'm Natalie, a nine-time super host on Airbnb. From hosting nearly 400 guests over the past few years, I've got a real sense of what information you need to know if you're traveling to New Zealand or arriving in Auckland for the very first time. Today, I'm gonna to share with you three important tips that will really help you when you travel here. Tip one, airport transfers. There's two options here, Skybus or Super Shuttle are the ones I recommend. If you're staying near the city, then the Skybus is a great option for you. There's no direct route using public transport to get you into the city. And the Skybus comes right past both the domestic and international terminal every 10 minutes. That's during the day. At night, they're less frequent, they're every 20 minutes. You can't miss the large red and white buses, they're splashed with the Skybus logo. If you are arriving late at night, I recommend you buy your electronic ticket online before you travel here. Then you won't need to travel with random bits of paper, just show your driver the e-ticket straight from your phone. If you don't have the chance, there is a small ticket booth at the domestic terminal, but it's only open during the daytime. It costs just $19 one way, and if you purchase online, you get a dollar discount per ride. The second option I recommend is the Super Shuttle. It's a door-to-door -door minibus, and if you're staying somewhere off the Skybus route, this is your best choice. It's best to pre-order on their website if you're arriving any time after 8pm as there won't automatically be a van waiting at their stand during the night. The Super Shuttle charges $35 for a ride into town and it takes at least 40 minutes as they'll be dropping off other passengers along the way. The thing I like about the Skybus is that they offer free Wi-Fi on board. This way you can check your emails or find those check-in instructions for your hotel or Airbnb if you haven't had the chance to get your phone working on the local network. That brings me to my second tip, where to buy a SIM card to get onto the local network. There is a Vodafone counter at the international terminal within the duty-free shopping area before you come through the customs hall, but if you're arriving late at night, it'll be closed. If it is closed, just get into town with the Skybus, use their Wi-Fi, get to your Airbnb or hotel, and then the next morning, head on down to Queen Street, and there's a number of telco stores based on Lower Queen Street. The three most popular phone companies in New Zealand are Vodafone, Spark, and Two Degrees. At Vodafone, for example, you can get a local travel sim for $29 that's good for 30 days. It's not an unlimited data plan. You get uh, 1.5 gigabytes, so don't forget to switch off your roaming data once you've arrived at your accommodation, or you'll burn through your data pretty quick. Once you've purchased your travel sim, if you go for the Vodafone option, Put it inside your phone and dial 777 to activate your plan. All the other telcos, Spark and Two Degrees, have stores in the centre of town on Lower Queen Street, or you can check out their websites before you travel here. Tip three is luggage storage. First check if your host is able to offer you an early check-in. Over peak summer months, this might not always be possible as it's likely there'll be guests checking out that day and it does take time for the housekeeping crew to do their job properly. If you're staying around Lower Queen Street, there are some good options for storing luggage close by. 
Firstly, there are two places located on the piers in front of the downtown ferry building on Key Street. You can try either the Harbour Information Kiosk on Pier 1, who take bags of any sizes, and they charge $10 per day. Or there are electronic lockers on Pier 2, next to where the Waiheke Ferry leaves from. These are accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they offer the benefit of multilingual instructions and payment via credit cards. The Harbour Information Kiosk on Pier 1, opposite Island Gelato, is manned, but they don't open until 9am and they close at 4.45pm. If you're staying in the Midtown area of the city, the best option for storing your luggage is coin-operated electronic lockers within the Intercity Bus Terminal, which is underneath the Sky City. This building is next door to the Sky Tower at 142 Hobson Street, so it's easy to find. This is super handy if you're staying at an Airbnb within the Heritage Hotel, where one of our apartments are. Their hours are 8am till 8pm. Lockers are very popular and they do fill up over the summer months, so make sure you get in early. Always double check the closing hours directly with the operator too, in case they decide to change their hours at short notice. If you get held up sightseeing, you don't want to lose access to your luggage for your first night in Auckland. Failing that, and if you're travelling light, which I highly recommend, you can always hang out in a cafe until check-in time. This is generally 3pm. Alternatively, if you only have limited time in the city and don't want to lose valuable sightseeing time, grab a city tour or harbour cruise. The operator will generally be happy for you to bring your luggage along, providing they have some space. So this might not be the case if you choose to tour the city on an e-bike or a tuk-tuk. Watch out for my upcoming episodes on the best local city tours to take. If you're just visiting Auckland for a day as a transit stop, there are electronic lockers in the rental car building just on the far side of the domestic airport terminal's drop-off and parking zone. This is also the area where the car will be waiting for you if you've ordered an Uber to take you into the city. I message my Airbnb guests via the Airbnb platform as soon as our accommodation has been serviced and is ready to welcome you. It's usually possible to check in one or two hours prior to our advertised time, but I usually can't confirm this until the day of your scheduled check-in when I have a better idea of how many turnovers the housekeeping crew has to do. Of course, you will need to have a mobile that works in New Zealand for any communication with your host. I highly recommend that you do this to ensure you get a five-star Airbnb rating. One of the criteria that the hosts are asked to rate their guests on is communication. So if you're unable to communicate, this puts you at a disadvantage. On that note, if you purchased a new SIM, don't forget to give your new phone number to your host, hostel or other accommodation provider. It is a requirement of most apartment buildings in the city that guest details are given to the building manager in case of an emergency. Drop me any questions in the section below. I'd love to be able to use your questions as content for future vlogs. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I hope you found some useful information that will help you get the most out of your stay in Auckland. If you're planning on coming over to New Zealand sometime soon, stay tuned for more tips. I've got a ton of them to share. You know the drill, hit the subscribe button. Check out my listings on Airbnb using the direct links I've posted below. I would love to host you and show you some great hospitality. I hope to see you soon.